I started talking to James on our time dating website around the middle of August 2020. After a few brief messages, he asked me to email him via his own personal email address, which I did. The first email that he sent me informed me that he had lost his wife six years ago from cancer and had been encouraged by his son to go on the dating website as he was lonely and was looking for someone with the same qualities to look after and spend time with. He also asked for my mobile number. It wasn't long before I received my first phone call from him and I have to say that he had a divine voice that I could have listened to for hours. He asked me to call him at 6am in the morning so that he could start his day better after talking to me. He then requested that I came off the dating website, which I did. He told me that he was due to fly to Turkey in a couple of weeks for eight weeks to undertake his job before he retired. This he did so and I was not able to have a first meeting with him because of his work commitments. It wasn't long before he messaged to say that his computer had been confiscated in customs due to COVID. He then asked me to send him two Apple computers and an Apple watch to monitor his heart. He stated that he was unable to do his work and he would pay me back with interest. I actually had no hesitation of helping this man, who I believed in and really thought was honest and trustworthy. The address he gave me was of his interpreter in Cyprus. In all, the cost to me was £5,200. Once he knew I had posted them, he asked for my bank account details to enable him to place the debt into my account. He then informed me that his bank had frozen his account for 21 days. This obviously was when alarm bells started going off. Due to the fact that I had spent all my savings on helping him, I felt that I needed to keep him sweet, in the chance that he would refund me the money that he owed me. A week later, he asked me to take out a credit card to enable him to gain money from, as he had no money for his medication or food. This I refused. He then asked me to use my overdraft, and I told him that I didn't have one. A couple of weeks later, he sent me a package with a cheap t-shirt, bracelet and necklace in. The t-shirt was purchased from a local shop, and the parcel was posted in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Still, I never questioned any of this. After the 21 days had lapsed, I asked him to repay me the money that he owed me as I was £1,000 overdrawn in my account and had no funds to pay my monthly rent with. He informed me that he needed an iPad to sync in with his computer in order to access his bank account. It was at this time that his phone calls became less often and his daily messages too. In the next few weeks, he informed me that he had been in hospital overnight on three occasions as his medication was not correct and he was dehydrated. After a week of not hearing from me, he messaged to say that he was unwell and and had been in a hospice. At this point, I replied, enough, and I told him that he had my bank account details and the iPad that I had sent him and he needed to pay me the £5,200 that he owed me. Needless to say that that was the last I heard from him. The next day I contacted the police and reported this as romance fraud. I would like to mention that this man, who I now feel did not exist, swept me off my feet, even though I had never met him. I have not had a long-term relationship since 2003, when I divorced and had never been treated so affectionately by any man. I now know that he was a liar and a thief. I have needed to take out a credit card in order to live as he took all my savings. On speaking to a professional person, they have told me that I am not to blame or shame myself as these people are very skilled at what they do. And he was.